Hey guys, it's Paul here, and today we're gonna be building these custom built-in shelves. And so this is gonna be a two-part series. This video, we're gonna show you how to build the base, install the cabinets, and the countertop. And in the second video, we're gonna build the shelves, paint the unit, install LED lighting, and finish it. So anything you see in this video, I'll try to link it in the description box below. And there'll be Amazon affiliate links and maybe Lowe's links. And if you do decide to buy anything, it'll definitely help out the channel. So I'd appreciate it a lot. And I wanna make a disclaimer here. I'm not a contractor or anything like that. You know, I'm just a DIYer learning and growing. So if you find anything that you could do better that you see in the video, just comment below and we'll all learn together. So let's get started. You first wanna start out by measuring the wall that you're gonna place the cabinets and shelving. And this will help you determine how many cabinets you need to buy. The room where we placed the shelving had carpet in it. So we removed the carpet where we would put the platforms. Make sure to remove the carpet tack strip as well. The platforms were made out of 3 4 inch plywood and they sat at five and a half inches off the ground. And the purpose of that was to account for the 5.5 inch baseboard trim that was going to be covering it. And what I did here was I used a straight edge jig and a circular saw to cut down all my plywood. And basically there were just two platforms to account for the 12 foot long wall. And I used wood glue and brad nails to hold it together. Here you can see that I'm using a can-do clamp and it's just it's really helpful to hold uh, two pieces of wood together while you glue it down and nail it together. And I'll include a link in the description if you want to take a look. You can buy pre-made cabinets like I did in this video or you can make them yourself from scratch but Due to time constraints, I just decided to buy pre-made ones and it's a lot quicker and easier and still has that great custom finished look. Alright guys, so we just built these boxes to lift up the cabinets as you can see because we didn't want them to sit on the ground, we wanted it to be a little bit lifted up. These cabinets were bought at Lowe's for $120 a piece, we got four of them and we had, took the doors off for now just to make it easier and you can see here there's a gap right here and it is 11 and a half inches and so we're going to split that up evenly between the cabinets and we're just going to put spacers in between to make it seamless so once you have your cabinets in place you want to check if it's level so it's good this way, good this way. It looks good. In this part of the video, I added stoppers on top of the platforms and they were basically scrap wood I cut out. They're about maybe 5.25 inches and I glued them down and nailed them down and they acted as a way for the cabinet to be pushed back as far as possible into the dead space and then be flush with the front of the platform. Here you'll see me using a stud finder to find all the studs around the wall and I'll attach scrap pieces of wood along the wall using the studs and this will be a anchor for the countertop to sit on top of. The studs will also be marked for when you add the shelving. Cut a groove here on the table saw and this is going to be attached to the wall here to support the uh, tabletop. And the groove here is for the wiring for the LED lights for the under, under shelf lighting. I'm using liquid nails as an adhesive to the wall. I use a leveler to make sure it's level with the cabinets, the top. And then I use a brad nail to have it held in place while I drill a hole and use a two and a half inch screw right into the stud. 
I first pre-drill a hole, countersink it, and then I love to use an impact driver to drive screws into the wall. I used to use just a regular power drill, but now that I've used the impact driver, it's changed my life. All the scrap wood is screwed into the studs and it's used for support for the countertop. So once I have the cabinet in place, I use screws to attach it to the platform. I use liquid nails to attach the side of the spacer to the cabinet and pocket holes to attach the spacer to the platform. I also use stopper supports on the bottom of the spacer and at the top of the spacer to prevent it from being kicked in. Here you can see we're basically repeating the steps and we're clamping all the cabinets together, screwing it down to the platform, adding a spacer with pocket holes and liquid nails, adding stoppers with liquid nails and brad nails, clamping it together and repeat. Here's a top view of the spacer where we add support with pocket holes attached to the wall and spacer so that it does not move. We're gonna pre-wire the cabinets for LED underlighting under the shelves. And so we have a space right here, it says empty space, and there's an outlet at the bottom. And so what we're gonna do is wire it along the wall. And right here, we I cut out a notch so that I can pre-wire it up into the shelves and across on both sides. To get access to the power supply and the outlets in the back for the LED lighting, I created a small door. And to do this, I just drilled a small hole in one of the cabinets, used my jigsaw to cut out the square, reattached it with some hinges, and then I used a doorknob that was left over from my, one of my IKEA projects. We got the cabinets in, we have the faces installed, they're screwed down and glued down, can't move it. And so what I did here is I have it coming out from the wall about 18 inches. These are 12 inch cabinets depth. Uh, I couldn't go any further because I wanted to keep this outlet over here. There's an outlet over there. There's an outlet in the back as well. To install the countertop, we added liquid nails all along the wall where the support was located. And then we also added liquid nails on top of the cabinets. Now the cabinets have this empty cavity that we filled with scrap wood and we held it in place using liquid nails. This had to be done because the empty cavity would have left an empty space and it would have been difficult to use a screw from the bottom of the cabinet into the countertop. All right, so we got the countertop installed. We have those pre-wiring for the under shelf lighting LEDs. And you can see here, there's another more wires. And then that's my secret door to the outlets. And so you can see here on the tabletop, what I did was I used three and a quarter inch plywood and I did it right in the middle because there's a 12 foot long wall. And so then I got a 12 foot long uh, pine board here so that there was no uh, cuts when you look at it in the front once it's painted. And so it's a seamless piece right there. And so what I used to connect everything was I used pocket holes uh, and screws as well as wooden dowels to connect all the pieces together and it fit pretty well. And so what you wanna do here to hide the seams, you know, not every wall is perfect. Uh, you just wanna use caulking to seal that up right there. Now you can see why I filled the empty cavity with scrap wood so that I can use it, use a screw to shoot through all of the plywood and into the countertop. But if you use a screw too short, it won't reach the countertop. If you use one that's too long, it'll go right through the countertop. So be careful. All right guys, so that concludes the first part of this series on how to build the base for it, install the cabinets and the countertop. In the next video, we're gonna install and build the shelving, install LED lighting, painting, and finishing it. So smash that like button for me, subscribe, and I'm actually trying to figure out a new slogan. So if you guys can comment below on any ideas 
that'd be very much appreciated. But in the meantime, remember, eat your vegetables. <laughs>